Welcome to EDUC 4703U, Teaching and Learning, Problem-Based Learning from UOIT. This is Session 1, Video Clip 3, and this video clip is entitled Software Used in This Course, Tools and Affordances. The analysis questions for this particular video clip are as follows. Number one, which competencies will need to be accessed and or developed in this course? Number two, which tools make use of synchronous technologies and how can you tell if a tool is synchronous or not? And number three, which tools allow for the creation of information and or projects that will be used to facilitate the course activities? This uh, video clip and the use of the tools is actually according to a, um, a model that's been developed um, shown on, on this particular slide. And it takes a look at uh, the definitions of software affordances and computer and user competencies and uh, then specifies the kinds of competencies that we'll be actually making use of throughout this course. So moving into the content then, so affordances can be thought of as a quality of an object to provide or to make a specific function that is available to the users, while competencies refer to the quality of the individuals being adequately or well qualified to use those particular functions. The HCHI model, or the Human Computer Human Interaction model, produced by Desjardins 2001-2005, is used as the basis for determining the competencies which will be addressed by the affordances embedded in the software you, tools used. And in some cases, you'll actually find that more than one competency is actually embedded within, or more than one affordance is embedded, embedded within the same tool. So uh, multiple competencies are actually required. Um, the first one is the technical competencies, which in involve essentially uh, all interactions between the user, uh, learners in this particular case, and the technology. So um, this would involve uh, navigating through the, uh, the interface itself, making use of the menu system, making use of uh, mouse and or the keyboard, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the technical uh, competency or the usage, uh, the, the ability to actually operate the technological object is going to be um, ubiquitous. That is, it's going to be found in all of the software packages. Um, and there are various different kinds of tools that are going to be available and made use of inside the technical, inside the, um, the use of uh, the software packages themselves. And this will vary depending upon the kind of platform that you're using, but also according to the kind of software that you're using. Social competencies um, are those interactions between learners using the affordances of communication that are provided by the technology. So this would be making use of everything from uh, text messaging through to email through to um, uh, audio, uh, video conferencing, um, all those kinds of pieces are all part of the social competency uh, area or field. Um, then we move on to the informational competencies, that is finding, sorting, creating, aggregating, filtering, and connecting information using technologies. So whenever you're using a search engine, whenever you're putting together um, a, a Word document, um, it's all within the informational competency area. And epistemological competencies, this is an area that probably hasn't occurred to many individuals, even though it's him. Um, it's implicit in many um, different particular pieces of software, um, and then in some it's avoided. But anyways, uh, the epistemological competencies talk about creating and modifying knowledge or new understandings using technology in order to solve problems. So in this particular instance, it would be to create a business model, for instance, in a, a software package uh, such as um, a spreadsheet, etc., and then using that business model that you've actually put together inside the spreadsheet uh, and modifying the variables to find out what would happen if uh, certain kinds of uh, uh, events would occur in the future, the what ifing. Um, this presentation part of this video uh, fo following from here will also be available on the UOIT Web WebCT course. And then you can click on the links uh, to take a look at uh, 
the various bits and pieces of um, software and uh, tutorials. The first uh, piece of software that we're going to be looking at is video conferencing. Um, so that's making use of Adobe Connect. And uh, Adobe Connect is required for this course um, as, the, as it is the major tutorial section uh, of the course itself. There are a series of technical requirements that you're required to meet in order to have a, um, an adequate experience um, within the Adobe Connect um, software package itself. The, this particular program, um, this course is entirely online and uses Adobe Connect for all face-to-face -face communications. All students are required to have the necessary computer resources and the ability to join and maintain a desktop video conference using Adobe Connect in order to participate in all classes. These requirements are repeated in the WebCT portion of this course. The computer needs to have an operating system of Windows XP or higher, or on the Mac side, Mac OS X 10.5 or higher, and uh, uh, a current version of Linux, so that's Ubuntu or uh, Red Hat or some variation. Um, it need, your computer also needs to have video capabilities with either a built-in or an external compatible webcam, so we'll be able to see your uh, wonderful smile. Um, and audio capabilities with appropriate an appropriate combination of headset and microphone. External speakers are not capable uh, acceptable as they tend to cause feedback noise within um, the microphones, and it's going to impinge on everybody else's quality to hear you and to make sense of what's going on. Uh, students may find that their experience in online courses is enhanced with the use of mobile computing devices. So much of um, this particular course can be used um, through laptops, iPods, smartphones, tablets, or similar devices. A good example of this, uh, you will find that on many smartphones, there are uh, apps that are available for Adobe Connect sessions, so you can actually participate in an Adobe Connect session right from your smartphone. And the same can be said about YouTube, uh, etc. <clears throat> Internet access, a very important part of um, the requirements for uh, video conferencing through uh, Adobe Connect. Uh, you must have internet access with sufficient speed or bandwidth to allow full audio and uh, video participation within Adobe Connect meetings. It's suggested that this connection be um, accessed from home as uh, many schools tend to have firewalls that block many of the features. Of course, UOIT does not uh, block these kinds of features. In order to verify the adequacy of your connection, you should run and pass the Adobe Connect self-test. A link is given for that. A speed test for your internet connection can also be performed, and we're suggesting that you make use of speedtest.net. Minimum speeds for your connection for Adobe Connect should exceed one megabyte per second download speed and at least 0.5 megabytes per second upload speed. Adobe Connect, like all software, has minimum uh, system requirements for Adobe Connect. Please ensure that your laptop and uh, or desktop, whatever you're using, meets the minimum requirements listed. And I've given, given you a, um, a listing according to technical specifications. Um, once the session of Adobe Connect is finished, ending the meeting will allow the system to reallocate the bandwidth somewhere else and help to relieve the system from unnecessary loads. Using the guidelines above will assist in making the experience of synchronous online classes more enjoyable for all con concerned. There are also a series of tutorials that will be available, and I'll give those links to you uh, in WebCT as well. We'll also make use of um, Skype. Uh, while it's not used to support tutorial sessions, you may want to use Skype as an alternative video conferencing service to conduct your own video conferencing sessions. So if you want to get with get together with your group um, online using video conferencing, Skype is available for that for free. We'll also be making use of collaborative document production and editing services. Uh, we'll be using Google Docs for this particular purpose, and uh, this is a required package. Um, if you're wanting to make use of a tutorial, if you haven't used Google Docs before, um, I'll provide a link for that as well. 
In addition, it may be of interest to learners that Google has recently added synchronous functionality to Google Docs. This means that multiple users must have shared who have shared access to the same document can simultaneously edit, modify a Google Doc, and all modifications will be synchronously updated um, on the site. In addition, we'll be making use of other pieces of software. Um, some of these are required. For instance, WebCT discussion blog and journal tool. It's all the same tool. It's just different views of the, uh, the, the same tool. We'll be using uh, the discussion forum essentially as a means of uh, communicating with each other about your ideas um, initially in the course, and it'll also give you an opportunity to uh, bring together the uh, the team that will be working on your PBLO. Um, I also invite you to make use of Twitter as a means of um, communicating with others within the course. And for that, uh, it, it's similar to passing notes around to everybody else within a face-to-face -face classroom. Um, but in this particular instance, we'll be making use of hashtags, etc. So your fir first initial uh, introduction to uh, to Twitter will be through uh, the tutorials, one of the uh, initial tutorial sessions. We can also make use of Prezi, and Prezi is a presentation tool that's an alternate to uh, presentations or PowerPoint or something along those lines. Um, A number of instant messaging tools can also be made use of, and these include WebCT Chat, MSN Messenger, Skype Chat, Adobe Connect Chat, um, etc. You may also want to use text messaging on your phone. However, um, there's only a one-to-one -one communication using a, a smartphone, etc., or text, text messaging. So you may want to use one of these other chat tools instead. It's assumed that most of you will already be uh, familiar with these kinds of tools that allows for synchronous text chat sessions. Some of these combined with whiteboards and file sharing affordances that provide additional functionality. And I've given you a uh, video tutorial or a link to a video tutorial for the WebCT chat. Um, we'll also be making use of uh, affordances that deal with video viewing, um, posting, and concept mapping. For video viewing and for posting, we'll be making use of YouTube, um, as will already be apparent because you are, will be watching this particular video clip and the previous ones and the following ones using YouTube. However, you will also be expected to post your PBLOs at the um, conclusion of this course back to YouTube. There's a tutorial provided for uh, posting of uh, your uh, your PBLOs back to YouTube when they are completed. We'll also be making use of a uh, concept mapping tool a couple of times throughout the course, and you'll be uh, directed to download CMAP, uh, which is a, a free tool that allows for um, presentations um, of uh, a graphical nature. So it's an organizational tool that allows you to present your ideas um, in a graphical kind of format. The um, theoretical part of this, um, the model is uh, given in a reference by Desjardins, Lacasse, and Belair, 2001. It's entitled, Toward a Definition of Four Orders of Competency for the Use of Information and Communication Technology, that is ICT in Education. This um, paper was given in the Proceedings of the 4th ISDED uh, International Conference in Calgary in 2001. And the full reference is given in uh, WebCT. To finish off this clip then, the synthesis questions for this particular uh, clip are as follows. Number one, why would the social competency not be called the communication competency? Number two, which competencies would be included in the Web 2.0 social network designation and why? And number three, which competencies would be included in the Web 3.0 semantic web designation and why? And what benefits, lastly, what benefits do video conferencing affordances provide for an online course?